These days, if I wanted to measure how quickly a bullet emerged from a rifle, I might use high-speed photography. But that can get expensive. Is there a better way? And what did folks do in the old days? Imagine we fire at a known target so that the bullet can embed in the target and cause the target to rotate upward. Can we analyze the motion of the target after the collision to get at the bullet's initial speed? Certainly one could imagine that the faster the bullet emerges from the rifle, the higher the target will fly. What's the right approach here? Well, many students start with an energy approach, and this is a good way to start, but it won't get us all the way there. So let's think about this. If we see the target with the bullet embedded rise by some height, then we know there's some conversion of kinetic energy to potential energy. We can calculate the potential energy of the target and bullet together as they rise upward after the collision. Where did this potential energy come from? Certainly this represents some portion of the initial kinetic energy of the bullet, but not all of it or even very much of it. Why is that? Well, in the inelastic collision between the bullet and the target, substantial energy was dissipated. So we cannot just equate the gain in potential energy of the target bullet system with the initial kinetic energy of the bullet. This is too bad because that would be really easy. Energy is dissipated in chaotic ways at the time of the collision, but we have other tools in our toolbox beyond energy. For instance, we can consider the momentum of the system. Before the collision, the bullet has a lot of momentum. And after the collision, the bullet target together conserve this momentum. So if we know the momentum of the bullet target system immediately after the collision, we know the momentum of the bullet and we can calculate its speed. But how do we know the momentum of the bullet target system right after the collision? Well, now we can apply energy conservation. The bullet target system has some kinetic energy that turns fully into potential energy when the system rises upward. That is, after the collision and before it rises to its highest point, energy is conserved uh, and is not dissipated in the bullet target system. So we can solve this. The potential energy of the bullet target system can be calculated and set equal to the kinetic energy of the bullet target system. Now we know the speed of the bullet target system post-collision, and we can calculate its post-collision momentum. And with this, we now know the momentum of the bullet before the collision, and therefore its speed. This type of situation is known in physics circles as a ballistic pendulum. It involves knowing when we can apply energy conservation principles, when we shouldn't, and when momentum can come to our rescue. In this simulation, we can vary the bullet speed by changing the type of rifle. We can change the mass of the bullet, and we can change the mass of the target. By playing around with these settings, you can set up and solve ballistic pendulum type problems. I hope this tutorial video has been helpful to you.